Hi guys, this is Ravenclaw What If. Welcome back to another What If story. Now this is a What If Deku had an ice court called Jack Frost. I think it's 16. Giving you a little update on a new series that I mentioned yesterday. Uh, what If Deku... Sorry, What If Deku is a dark hero. That's the name of the series. Go down... Oh, sorry. Join my Discord. Um... The link to it would be down down in the description down below. There is a um on my Discord on on the server name um storyboard for Dark Link Deku. You'll be able to um interact with me because I'll be making the story on there through Discord. You guys could you know give out your suggestion for the what if, as long as it it works well with a. Uh, with you know Zelda lore, and with the story, I'll I'll implement it in the what if if it makes sense and if it's a you know awesome idea that I need it for the what if. I already have a I already have a quirk set out for him. It's not gonna be overpowered. It's gonna be um, I call it. I'm copying a name from my other uh, what if, not other what if, but other anime, but I'm just adding a different word to it. It's basically um. It's the quirk name is called Shadow Blade Work. Now he's able to like any blade he sees. He's able to um, create a create a perfect copy made out of shadow, and he just has to look at the blade, the weapon, once, and he can um, perfectly copy it. That's well, that was basically what his quirk evolved around because um, there's not going to be and no like only thing like powerful is going to be in the what if it's going to be creatures that are able to breathe fire or you know because of Gandorf he's a sorcerer a sorcerer so a little bit of magic will be involved into the what if because it's you know it's the Legend of Zelda universe so there there's no way around using magic so. I already got the ship planned out for the series, so if you guys want to want to you know get a peek at it, a sneak peek at it, it's on my Discord server. Like I said, it's under um, storyboard for Dark Link Deku because Princess Zelda is going to have two daughters in this one. One of them is one of them is going to be the ship. I got I just got to come up with names for them and find a. Fine, um, because I want the ship of Zelda to have dark hair, like black, maybe purplish. Oh, I, I've seen a couple fan art with a uh, evil of Zelda with um purplish hair. I'll have to search for more artwork online at some point. But you'll be seeing part zero of this really soon. Um, on one of my random what if days that I do random what ifs. It's every like. Every Monday, uh, Monday and Tuesday, just random what ifs I feel like doing, but the other ones are on a scheduled day. Like my Wednesdays are my Ruby what ifs, and every Wednesday I um I cycle them around. And on my days I work every uh, Thursday through Sunday, I work on my two main what ifs for right now. It's um. We're about to get into, oh, sorry, Ice Deku and um, Dragonborn, not Dragonborn, <laughs> Dragonkin, but let's get into the what if because I wasted enough time already. As we start our episode off outside of the home base of the League of Villains, as you see hooded figures come out and come in. Through the abandoned bar that the general population believes. As you see Kira Gary cleaning some glass from the bar. As you see Diab uh, Diablo drinking some beer as he sets it down. It's time, Kira Gary. As they open the portal, as they walk through it. As they step outside of a warehouse, as they see a bunch of 
you know, oh, sorry. As this is the rally point for like-minded individuals like themselves. As Diablo looks at, uh, go, um, goes over to Kirigiri. This is all of them. Let's wait a couple more minutes, sir. Fine, but I don't want to miss it. It's a very important day today. Yes. Yes, sir. As the rest of the villain finally get there, as you see, the, the main um, famous ones that you know from Hero Academia, Toga, Dobby, Muscular, uh, the Crocodile dude, I think his name is Spinner. I forget that one guy's name was the uh, Bladed Teeth. I just don't remember his name. I had it like Moonfish. There we go. As we have Moonfish there. And you got that um, that one kid with the gun and, you know, the gas, poison gas stuff. That poison gas cork or, or whatever, he's, he's there. As You know, everyone that was in... Um, the fourth arc are here early because of Diablo wants to get things going. He doesn't like to waste time. He's a lot more punctual. He, he takes this a lot more serious than Shigaraki would. So he, so he decided, so he decided to gather reinforcements early. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the league of villains. Recruitment Center. I am the leader of the League of Villains, Dobby. Uh, no, sorry, not Dobby. <laughs> wrong person. Diablo. And this is my second in command, Care Gary. As one of them screams, why would we join you, freak? As a lot of them are screaming, a green list, the guy. Huh. Why you should join me? Oh, that's an interesting question. And I have an answer for you. Whoever you are. It's simple. We're here to kill All Might. As everyone's quiet, that's not my main goal. He says a piece on the board that needs to be taken out. He's been on stage far too long. But All Might's farewell performance will be glorious. Now, now let's get down to task, ball task. There's a lot of you. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to make some cuts. Cuts in the recruitment center. Here, Gary, will you do the honors? Except for those lots. Those, as he point, as he uh, tells Care Gary, as he whispers it near his whatever he has, of the ones he want to uh, not have, you know, sorry, the ones that he doesn't want to hurt. As several portals come forming, like, um, around their necks, as all Dobby and, um, Toga, the rest of them are freaking out as they all close. As all the the people that um, Diablo don't want become beheaded, as they all flop on the floor all at the same time. You see, the hero society is no longer lol, no longer works now nowadays. It needs to be removed. As Toga said, but what about that, uh, what was it, Herald Suppressed Task Force? I believe that's what you called it, Dobby? Yes, Toga has, uh, Toga's right. What about the Herald, the Herald Suppressed Task Force? There have been, they've been more active recently. Yes, good old Task Force. Don't worry, I have plans for them. 
imagine that organization in a in my power to do what I want. But that's for future plans. Kira Gary, as he opens the portal, it's your choice if you want to follow me. If you want to, you know, actually do something, then follow. If you want to stay down in the dumps like sewer rats, that's up to you. As, as all of them come flowing in, as they all in the, they go, as they all been transported to the bar, as Diablo goes strictly for the remote for the TV, as he turns it on, as he clicks onto the sports festival. Good, I didn't miss anything. As Dobby's, why, sir, oh, why are you so interested in the sports festival? Scouting their performance, Dobby. I believe that's what you're called. I believe that's what that crazy blonde said, at least. Yes, my name's Dobby. I'll follow you, but Endeavor's mine. Ah, oh, so you have... I believe he's a second rank hero? Yeah, you can have him. I don't really care. I'm more interested in... The... The Hero Suppressed Task Force Brat. Izuku Midoriya. The, sta the stage I have planned for him. The performance will be one of a lifetime. I could, guarantee, I could guarantee you that. As he gets a sadistic smile. As we cut to the scene where everyone's getting ready for the race. As you have Izuku. And you have um, the girls. As Izuku so. I hope you girls have a plan. As they smile, they're like, yes, Izuki, we got a we got a plan in, indeed. As interesting. Good luck, you two. Good luck, Izuku. As as soon as they announce the race, the gates open as Izuku rush forwards in a um full cowling. As uh Momo jumps on Shota's back as she blasts, uh, she goes forward, blasting the entrance with ice, leaving everyone behind. But as, as he sees a couple of the, uh, the three-pointers, as he jumps on top of one of them, as he touches it, as it frees instantly, as he kicks it, as he does that combination with a few other um, three-pointers, while moving forward, not slowing down whatsoever, except for the moment where he has to stop to, you know, touch it. But that, but that's more of a couple seconds for each robot he destroys. As you have Shota and Momo, as Momo, sorry, as Shota taking out his eyes, her one one of her free hands, as Momo is throwing. I don't know what she would throw. Um, something interesting. Let's see. Uh, as they f move past the robots, Momo throws small grade grenades, blowing up the robots. As that's how they've been. That's that's pretty much what they're doing. As we get to the the cliff where you have to climb on the. Sorry, use a rope to get to get to the other side. I'm changing the name of um, his um, special move because I think someone came up with a better name for it. I think it was um, changing it to um, Winter Wonderland. I think that's what he called it. Whatever. As Izuku, you know, as Izuku stands in front of the cliff, Winter Wonderland. As his eyes start to glow bright blue, as the scenery turns to ice. Even Momo and um, Shota were were um, surprised 
because they're they're uh, they're right behind Izuku, as Izuku just walks off the edge as a bridge forms forms a bridge from his footsteps, as a, when he's about when he's about time to step on nothing, a brick a, a brick of ice appears forming forming the bridge while he's walking. As you know, a, after the shock from the surprise, they blast they blast off. They pass Izuku. As Izuku smiles, huh. apparently they want to be first place. Huh. We'll see. As he hasn't made up his mind if he's going to want to win the first place or not. And I'm skipping the speech. Let's just say he was very professional from being the, from the military and from the being from the mem, being a member of the Hero Suppressed Task Force. So it was a former move. No, none the least. So let's get back to the uh, back to their our story. As you have, they're they're in the middle of um. They're in the middle of the land field, well, Momo and um, Momo and Shota is. As Izuku is like, huh. They cut back to a couple of students trying to cross the bridge. As Izuku feels someone on his bridge, as he um, as he deactivates. The cork, as the land goes back to a natural color, as the bridge disappears, as a couple of students fall from the cliff, as you know they're out of the race because there's no getting back from that. A couple of heroes had to rescue them. As he gives the uh, a devilish smile, as them uh, uh, at the announce table, they were saying that was kind of dirty. I might have to disagree with you. Percent Mike. Young Midori over there plays smart. That's the way to do it. Divide and conquer. I was all I was curious why he left a bridge up there for other students to use. He was a trap. Clever, Izuku, clever. Um <clears throat> You seem to know young Midoriya. Well, yeah. He's my nephew. My last name is Midoriya, by the way. As you know, they big, you know, they have a little dialogue between each other as we get back to the race, or back to the landmines. As he slides in the air with ice, as Momo, you know, they got to the um, finish line already. As Izuku, you know, it's not um, he doesn't care about first place. He decided he wasn't going to do it, so. He give you know them their spotlight as he gets to the end of the line line on um, the minefield as he sees Bakugo you know doing his Bakugo thing in the middle of the landmines as Izuku gets a grin as he shoots several ice spikes at the landmines as they continually explode as Bakugo gets thrown straight into a tree. As Izuku smiles, as he runs off full cowling, makes it makes it in second place. When Bakugo finally finishes, he gets up to Izuku, grabs him by a shirt. What the what the hell, Midoriya? <coughs> that was cheap. As Izuku smiles, it wasn't cheap if you fell for it. If anything, I would be embarrassed if I did. Such an act. I didn't do anything. I just crossed the finish line like the rest of us. It's not my fault you can't pay attention to your surroundings. As he slaps his hand away. As he walks off with Momo and um, Shota. As they're happy. As the announcement comes off. As now they're doing... Uh, they, uh, uh, they established a point system. And I think it's called the Jousting or something like that. Sorry, guys. Something popped up on my thing. As you have Nedure and um, Kennedy observing the match, the activities. 
as she's keep an eye on Iziku on his performance. She had um she had some downtime to spend to watch the sports festival and she doesn't want to miss her little brother's performance. As she's been quite impressed what she's seen so far, especially with that ice bridge he did. As she's shocked that he's a, he's capable of doing something, you know, something down advanced with his bracelet still on. So she's keeping an eye on him. Even though I said that a couple of times, but <laughs> that's pretty much what she's doing. As Momo Totoro uh, Shota, Izuku, and one more member. I think there's four total. Ah, what, 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 um, let's, this. I don't want May, because that's, she went off and did her, she found someone else, um. Ha, huh. Shinzo. That's, that's an interesting one I haven't done before. As you can see Shinzo by himself, as he can't find a member yet, as who he was going to go was originally Monomo, but the, his team's failed. And so is Kendo's, so he's kind of left out on the dirt. Hey, Shinzo. Oh, Midoriya. Oh, what do you need? Seems like you don't have a team. You could come on, you know, team with us. It, it, it should be fun. You'll definitely, you know, get past the next stage. If you're, you know, hang with us for a little bit. It's like, sure, why not? As they go off, they form a team as the event progress. As with, with Iziku the horse. Uh, was there three or four? Oh, I'm just saying there was four, I guess. Or whatever. Um, Wait, it was, um, in Canada, it was a uh, Oraka. Yeah, there was four. Um, so I'm not, I'm not misthinking it or mispronouncing how many members there was four. So outside of you know Izuku's extremely deadly eyes, and Shota's eyes, and um, I don't know if I, I don't know if I if I told you guys that she's used fire in this. I think she did. So yeah, she used a little bit of fire. She's still a little bit uncomfortable using it, but over the time with Izuku, Izuku got her to use fire, so. And not including, you know, Momo throwing random shit at, at everyone, so with, with her creation quirk, then you have Monoma that if they talk, you know, not sorry, Monoma, but you have Shinzo that when they talk, you know, body jack, so. Yeah, so uh, he's. They work really well. As the event ends, as. As they call the. As they spin the wheel, as it goes to the, the 1v1 matches. As we cut to a scene where Nezu is been watching the fight or is going to fight watch the fights as she goes over to Nezu ah oh, um Miss Midoriya Miss Midoriya or young Midoriya what can I what what can I do for you dear yes um if my brother wins this event like I know he's going to I want to fight him after the after the final bout Make it happen, Nezu. I want to see how much he's grown. Interesting, Miss Midoriya. Very well. If your brother indeed gets first place, like you said, like you say, I will allow it. Thank you, Nezu. As she walks off with Nedre. Come on, Nedre. Let's get a better seat. Come on, Kennedy. Stop, stop pulling me around. 
Well, if you would move fast enough, then you then I wouldn't have to pull you. Now would I? And she's like, you're such a slave driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear every before Nedre. Come on. They're a pretty good friend, so. Kennedy is <laughs> pushy. And she wants something, she'll go and get it. So that's how her personality set is a little bit, so. And she's extremely overprotective over her brother. Ever since um, he got framed and got his name cleared. He's got, she's got a little bit more worse, but there's not much she could do about it because, you know, he's, he's, you know, of age. So, you know, but she still does the whole overprotective sister thing, even though, you know, Izuku's, you know, a adult. He's like 18, 19. So as we cut to the locker room, as Izuku's getting ready, as he's getting dressed, as he walks out of the, the locker room of the, you know, little area they're in. As he walks down the hall. As Endeavor stops him. Good, you're here. I caught you before the, before the tournament. Be, uh, be, um, the one-on-one -on -one begins. I've been quite impressed with your performance so far. But I want you to go all, all out against my daughter. Even though you have a, a romantic re relationship with her, I don't want you to hold back because of her, of your feelings for her. You might have got her using her fire, but she hasn't totally embraced, uh, embraced the idea of using her fireside. No worries there, Endeavor, sir. Your daughter would kill me if I held back on her at all. She could be quite intense sometimes. As a devil laughs, says, all right, I'll let you, I'll let you go for now. As Izuku's walking out of the hall, as he gets, someone grabbed his hand, as he gets tugged across a different hallway, as you have Momo and um, Shota, as they pin him against the wall, as she's like, so what were you talking about, old man about? Izuku. And she's getting really, really close. As she, he's just wanting to give me some encouraging words and try to get, try to get you to use your fire a little more. Going, going all out, not to hold back. And she grabs his shirt collar or whatever he's wearing. Gets really close. And she's like, you better not hold back or I'll kill you myself. And Momo, I'm definitely going to win the first date. As she, Momo's like, I don't think so. As she's like, what's this? And what is this date I'm supposed to know um, this hearing about? And she's like, fine, we made a little wager on, up between us. Whoever gets first place, you know, gets to take on a, uh, a date without the other being around. But what happens if you don't? It's like, we didn't really th think about that. Or what happens if I win? What do I get? As their uh, face both turns red. As whatever you want. As he smiles. Well, we won't know until I win. Good luck to you girls. As there was no declaration of war because Bakugo was occupied with something else. Yelling at someone else. So... As we cut to the first match, it's Izuku and Shinzo. As Shinzo get in the ring, as Izuku get in the ring, as Midnight calls the fight, as she begins to fight, as Shinzo get in the fighting sand, so does Izuku. As Izuku says, how about this, Shinzo? No quirks, hand-to-hand -hand combat. As Shinzo agreed. As they agreed. As they both nod. As they go in for a kick. As they're each strike. They either parry. Or they dodge it. So that's been going on for a few minutes. It's actually quite an intense fight. 
as everyone's, you know, quite impressed by um, their both performance in this martial arts itself. So did um, Kendo was surprised because um, Shinzo has been keeping his talent in martial arts a secret. As Shinzo switch, switch into a different fighting style in mid-charge, as he gets a, a very good solid hit off Izuku, as Izuku jumps backwards, as he um, wipes the blood off his mouth, as he spits some blood, blood that's in his spit. Impressive, Shinzo. You know more than one style. Now this just got interesting. And I'm going to be a douche and stop the episode here. The next part will be tomorrow night. So, you know, there won't be much long of a wait. So, hope you guys have a awesome day or night. Depending on time zones and all that. So, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.